Hey friends, from the rainy state of Florida. It's been raining for days and days and days. <sighs> Ella, do you want some breakfast? Okay. Howdy y'all, we're making Ella some breakfast. Ella, or Everett, is at daycare. John's school, home. Preschool. Preschool, whatever. Oh. What is it called? Because I get corrected every day. Daycare makes it sound like it's like babysitting. Sorry about the water, people. I'm throwing <laughs> the water bottle here. Makes um, it sound like he's just getting like babysat. You know what I mean? He's not getting babysat. He's getting preschool. Yeah. He's learning. I'll never stop. Here, sorry. Floaty vibes. Don't. Don't. You're supposed to beat the eggs. I'm going to beat the eggs. I'm going to beat you. What kind of bread is it? A surprise. Whoa. A surprise? What kind of surprise? What is it? This feels like a loaded question. I don't know. Uh, you tell me. What kind of surprise? <laughs> so, John, I'm going to give you guys a little John weight loss update because John's never on camera anymore. He's busy living life, making moves. John has lost 30, how many? 30 pounds? 30, like 32. He's lost like 32 pounds. So proud of him in the last couple of months. But I wanted to tell you guys, I have come up with a list of five things I wish I knew when I started Moonjaro. And I wanna share it with you, just in case you're starting a GLP medication, this can go for any of those kinds of meds. Um, but just some like tips and tricks, you know, just some things to help you um, possibly feel a little bit better. Oh, come get your eggs. Eggies. Eggies. I, bacon. I don't have bacon. Hope you like brown ones. They're not brown. Don't say that. You'll get her upset. I want toast with butter. You want toast with butter. Okay. All right. Five things I wish I knew before starting Munjaro. Number one, acid reflux is real and you will probably deal with it at some point. Even if you've never struggled with acid reflux in your life, like myself, or like literally anybody I know, pretty much everyone who's taken this kind of medication has struggled with acid reflux. There are some things you can do to kind of ease that transition because what this medication does is it slows down your digestive system, so everything takes longer to digest, which there's another tip in here for that kind of thing. So there are some things you can do to kind of help the acid reflux situation. One of those is being, you can start an over-the-counter or a medically medically prescribed or a doctor prescribed antacid. Um, if I would have known I was gonna struggle as bad as I did, I would have started one of those immediately. Toast is done. Can y'all believe Ella eats eggs now? We're so proud. My doctor put me on omaprazole. I don't have to take this anymore now that I'm on the lowest dose, but um, if you struggle with acid reflux in any form or fashion, you're definitely going to want to take something for that if you're going to be taking this medication. A big thing I also take is go ahead and get yourself some digestive enzymes. These papaya ones taste really great and you have them with every single meal and I swear these help. So when I was on the super strong dose of medication, I needed this. I don't need this as much anymore. Um, but with my loading dose, I always just take an enzyme, a digestive enzyme. These are really great. I'll have them linked down below. Uh, they're from Amazon and 10 out of 10 would recommend. Number two piece of advice I have when starting a GLP medication. Hold on, let me put you here. Or Moonjaro. Let me turn the fan off. Just like a random laundry basket, a random Kevin the carrot. My number two thing I wish I would have known is how exhausted I was gonna feel the couple days after my shot. You're gonna most likely, can't speak for everyone, I am not the ambassador of every single person who's taken this medication, but there's a high chance that you're going to possibly feel like you have the flu or feel really run down and tired and sick. If you are of the camp of I'll sleep when I'm dead. I hate that for you. That is not the way to live. Sleep now. Sleep is important. Sleep will help you live longer. I'm not kidding. It's science. Speaking of sleep, before we get into the rest of all of the tips and tricks I have for you guys, I'd like to say thank you to Helix for sponsoring today's video. I've been working with Helix for three plus years. You guys know my bed is everything to me. 
I mean, look at it. Would you look at it? I gotta make it. What's new? I have been sleeping on my Helix Plus mattress for three plus years. I'm absolutely obsessed with it. It is the greatest sleep of my entire life. I have a really strong night routine and none of it would be possible without sleeping on a good mattress. If you are not getting good sleep, you are not helping your body. <laughs> good sleep is so important to me and ever since I started sleeping on our Helix mattress, I've had less shoulder pain, less back pain. I wake up more rested, not sore. Just from sleeping on a bad mattress, it can ruin your whole entire day. It can ruin, ruin your whole entire life, honestly. If you don't have a clue what Helix is, it is a mattress company and they deliver straight to your door. You go online, you take their sleep quiz. It's really in depth. It'll ask you a bunch of questions that are suited to you and they will match you with the mattress that is best for you. It will match you with the mattress that is best tailored to your needs and what you need for your perfect night of sleep. We were matched with the Helix Plus mattress, which I absolutely love. It is one of my favorite things about this brand is that they make mattresses for plus size people like myself. We are notoriously really hard on furniture. Mattresses are no exception and the Helix Plus mattress holds up beautifully. It's made for big bodies. It's made for people like me and like John. We all have Helix mattresses in this house and I'm telling you, it is the greatest sleep of your whole entire life. You can also sleep on your mattress for 100 nights and if you don't love it, you can send it back. That is really nice that you get that 100 night sleep trial. So that's over three months. You can decide if you love it. If you don't love it, you can send it back. They also have financing options, which is great because I know it's a really big purchase. I know a mattress is a huge purchase and it's a commitment and you don't know and who wants to spend that kind of money and not know if they're gonna love it. So paired with the 100 night sleep trial and a financing option, I think that's so great because you can figure out a payment plan that'll work for you and they also have a 10 year warranty on all of their mattresses. So you have 10 years of warranty on your bed and right now Helix is running a 4th of July sale. I love that they've been having all of these sales. This is like the perfect time of year to grab your mattress if you're thinking of getting a new one. If you go to helixsleep.com slash Lauren Brazy, you will get 25% off of your mattress plus two free pillows while this 4th of July sale is running. So that is amazing. Now is a really good time to invest in your mattress and invest in good sleep. Good sleep cannot, it's, it can't be touched. It does so many amazing things for your body. It does so many amazing things for your health. And if you are not sleeping on a good bed, you are not going to get all the benefits of great sleep. You're just not. I know every single thing that they produce is high quality and exceptional. And I would not be working with this brand as long as I have, if they didn't make top notch products in top notch beds, the bed is everything, honey. It is everything. So make sure if you guys are ready to dive in and make your purchase of your mattress, utilize this 4th of July sale. You can always go to helixsleep.com slash Lauren Brazy for 20% off of your mattress at any time. If you're watching this and it's not 4th of July and you're watching this years from now, you can always go to helixsleep.com slash Lauren Brazy for 20% off of your mattress plus two free pillows. But while this sale is running, you get 25% off of your mattress and to the two free pillows. The pillows are life. They're amazing. All of the products are great get good sleep. It's important for your health and you're going to want it. You're going to need it if you are taking this medication, especially because you're going to be eating less calories more than likely. If you're pairing that with working out, you need to get the best rest. You need to rest. Let your body rest. If you're able to take a nap, chill out, drink tons of water, all of those things, but you're going to feel super tired. It's, it's going to happen more than likely. Um, it's, it's a big shift. It's a big change in your tummy and all of the, the way you digest things and the way your body takes things in. So just keep that in mind. You're definitely going to want to have good rest. Also a really big tip that I always have for anybody who's starting a medication like this is make sure you're getting enough protein. Protein will make you feel better because typically for myself, at least when I first take my shot, the few days after that, nothing sounds good. No food sounds appealing. I don't want to eat, but if I don't eat, I won't feel good. So I always try and make sure that I get protein in. They make amazing protein shakes for any kind of person. You find whatever one works best for you, but always, always, always never skimp out on your protein. Protein is going to help you recover faster. It's going to make you feel full. You're going to get all of the good things that you need. Protein, protein, protein. I cannot say that enough. Protein. And if you can't stomach eating a meal, a protein shake is great. They are 
big lifesavers and cup off shavers. They're a huge lifesaver and they come in the clutch every single time. How do I wanna make my bed? You say Ella was here. How long will this bed stay made? That's the true question. Because my kids live to get in my bed. Ella to hide in the garage. Perfect example. <laughs> you sleep with your eyes open? Got some good sleep, huh? <laughs> Tip number three or number four, I'm not really sure at this point, or like a piece of advice. You may find when you do your injection that you'll have redness at your injection site. I didn't have an issue with that until I was a few months in. Why is my skin red right here? Until I was a few months into taking my shot. Um, but I checked with my doctor and in 99.9% .9 of cases, that's totally normal. Um, I just get like a red circle wherever I inject at. It's a little itchy. If you have an issue with itchy, try an anti-itch cream. Don't itch it. It'll spread. But nine times out of ten, that will happen. Just forewarning before you freak out. If you have a little bit of health anxiety like myself, you know, that lingers around, that may be, um, that may happen to you. And 99.999% of the time, totally normal. Another thing that I wish I would have known when I started Moonjaro is that in order to lose weight, you can't starve yourself. You have to eat. This goes hand in hand with the protein comment I said earlier. You need to eat. This medication for a lot of people, not everyone, like I said, I am not the ambassador of all things GLP, but you're not going to necessarily want to eat but you will not have the best results or have really great results if you starve your body we all know what happens when you don't eat anything it's not good for you it's bad for your gut it's bad for your health it's bad for every single part of your life so make sure you're eating because you're not going to want to more than likely you need to suck down a few protein shakes eat some really good nutrient dense foods Stay away from, you know, red sauces, acidy foods, chocolate, caffeine, all of those things can aggravate your stomach and can in turn make you feel like absolute dog shit. Don't do that. Eat food. Don't be scared to eat. I know a lot of us have some disordered eating that we're working through. Um, I also suggest getting a therapist. That wasn't on my list, but it should be. Get a therapist, girl, boy, friend, dude, person get a therapist because when you don't have the ability to eat um, as we are conditioned to do to celebrate to grieve to mourn to anything anxious happy excited all those feelings tend for me to go along with food and when i was no longer able or had the want to eat and i still had to process and work through emotions and hard stuff um it was really beneficial to me to have my therapist i'm a big fan of her big fan huge fan of my therapist and I cannot recommend that enough because you're gonna go through some emotional stuff when you can't turn to food your one true friend to get you through some hard stuff you're going to want to have someone to talk to who gets it or who can help you work through stuff without turning to food huge huge piece of advice don't skip out on your mental health because you need to make sure you're keeping that in check what was I a few weeks in and I made my first video or like what do I do without food I just, you know, had a hard day and what do I turn to? I turn to my favorite piece of cake or my favorite dinner or celebrating with, you know, fast food. And I didn't have the desire physically to eat that way. Should I fix my face before I keep talking? I'm sure you guys can't take me serious like this. It's really weird. Um, it was really weird for me and a huge adjustment to not be able to turn to my one true love, which is food, when I was going through hard stuff. And I'm really glad that I had a therapist on deck already. You should absolutely invest in your mental health throughout this journey or starting any kind of medication such as this because it's going to change physically how you feel about food, but not up here. And that is a complete mind fook. Okay? Take my word for it. Don't skimp out on your mental health. Put it above all else. Maybe I should make that number one. Get a therapist. Uh, also, just a pro tip, number five. We'll say it's number five. Don't Raw vegetables. I feel like this is just something we all need to know. I love a good salad. I love a good Brussels sprout. And I like things crunchy. I have a really 
you know, big sensory input. I love a crunchy salad. I love crunchy veggies. Crunchy veggies will take you down quicker than you ever possibly imagined they could. You know how hard it is to digest or for your stomach to digest raw vegetables? Very difficult and you will pay the price. Also, along the lines of things that'll help, if you do get acid reflux, and I'm talking the kind that wants to take you out and you're like, this is surely it, I'm dying. When in doubt, I have it here in my bathroom. Reach for old trusty baking soda. One teaspoon of this or two teaspoons of this and four ounces of water, it's like putting water on a fire. You're welcome in advance. You're going to want to take major care of your gut health during this time of taking this medication. It can wreak havoc on your gut. Big time, um, but this was like my go-to. This is my emergency stash because when the Alka-Seltzer wasn't working or the Tums or the Omaprazole or whatever I was taking to help the acid reflux wasn't working, this always works. This always works and we all, most of us have it in our house. Baking soda and water, you're welcome. Raw vegetables, don't do that. And the final piece of advice is never trust a fart. Girls don't say stuff like that. We do. Don't trust a fart because you're either going to be shitting through a screen door or you're not going to be able to shit at all. It's going to go one of two ways. I hope for you it goes the way that you're most comfortable with, but for me it went both ways and it changed up all the time until I started really focusing on my gut health. Um, that is something that I am really... As I venture in to this new territory of giving a sh what I put into my body, and that includes medication. I don't love that I'm on a, on a medication, but the benefits of this medication with my blood sugar, with weight loss, with everything far outweigh, you know, the gut issues that I have had along the way. Um, I had to get this weight off of me. I had to knock it off. I had to get it out of here, get moving, get myself motivated, get myself physically into the gym and moving my body again. And this medication helped me do that but it has wreaked havoc on my gut and now I'm really looking into every single thing that I put in my body as far as supplements and foods and vitamins and all those things. I'm trying to make sure that I'm, you know, balancing my gut health because it, your gut is linked to your brain. It all is connected and I know that I cannot live a happy life without a happy stomach. So I've been really focusing on that. I will leave the links for down below for what I use for my gut health specifically and like all of my supplements and everything that I've been taking to feel my absolute best. But just know, if you are on this road of medication or you can't for some reason get it, you are, there is, hope is not lost. I really, I know that the FDA is pushing things for obesity currently and things are getting pushed through for authorization. There are so many weight loss clinics now that are opening and that handle things like this specifically. I just so happen to get this medication early enough um, with my doctor prescribing it and I haven't had any issues really filling it other than that one time you all know when I made a video about it that time. Don't give up on yourself. Don't stop advocating for yourself. If you truly feel like this is something that can help you, there's many different variations of these kinds of medications. There are so many options. Advocate for yourself. Maybe find a source of somebody who knows what they're talking about or where you can go and look into it. I don't know any of those things. That's why I always say to talk to your doctor. If your doctor won't listen to you, speak up, advocate still. And if they still won't listen, find a new doctor. There are really good doctors out there. Find another one. Find someone who will listen to you and take your word. And will take you seriously. It's really hard to be taken seriously when you're overweight. We have been given the same advice for years and years and years, to, despite what other comorbidities we have, you know, or things that will prevent us from losing weight, whether that be with your mental health or your physical health, PCOS, insulin resistance, all of these things can stop somebody from losing weight. It is not always as simple as eating less and moving more. Eating less and moving more does help, but there are other tools in our toolbox that we can utilize to help us and to make us live our best lives. And I hope that you find the strength to advocate for yourself and know that you are worthy of being taken care of. And any doctor who won't take you seriously and really listen to your concerns um, and gives you just the standard advice, find another doctor. Uh, you're never alone in this life, in this world. And I love you all and I will see you guys soon. Bye friends.